Hey guys, it's me, Vivs here from SlideNerd. We all make apps that connect to the internet. What do you do when there is no connection? What do you do when the server returns an error? Do you return a toast message? Do you print a log statement? Let me know in the comments below. But in this video, I'm gonna talk about how we can handle network errors or errors that arise while connecting our app with the internet. We are gonna take a look at how we can handle Woli error to be very specific since we are using the Woli library out here. So let's get started. In the annotations at the start of the previous video, I had mentioned that there is a bug in this video. I don't know how many of you saw this, but there is one man who definitely did, and it's Jan Van Den Bard. Hopefully I have pronounced that correctly. He said that the way I have initialized the default values is incorrect and it may lead to a bug. So going back to the code, let me show you what that bug would actually be. Going to our fragment box office, inside the parse JSON response method, if you remember, all the default values are initialized outside the for loop. Well, this is good as long as we have valid data inside our for loop's current iteration. If, let's say, the second item in the for loop doesn't have valid data, then none of the if conditions are going to run. But at the same time, the valid, the last values that are stored inside these variables will be the valid values of the previous iteration. In other words, the default values won't be coming inside those variables. Rather, what we need to do is take these variables and put them inside our for loop here so that we have the default values initialized at each iteration of the for loop. So this fixes our small bug. So here's our app on pre-lollipop and lollipop devices. The next thing that I would like to fix would be this title. It's bold here on lollipop and it's not bold here on pre-lollipop. That can be done simply by removing the style that I've applied to the text view where I have said base or text appearance app combat body one simply remove that at both places and we should be good to go so one more thing that you need to take care of while putting up all this text would be to take a look at the typography in material design I'm not going to get into too much detail about it but here are the sizes that you should be using here under the typography section under style the most important part of our design specification comes from the list category under components if you go down all the way, there are different specifications for single line list, two line list and three line list. Our case can be considered as a two line list which has an avatar instead of an icon. Now this is a spec for icons with text and this is the one which says avatar with text. So we can consider those images as avatars and based on that we can follow this spec over here. Now if you are wondering about how to validate your material design setup, you can just go to YouTube, user, slide note, playlist. There in my material design playlist is a video number 17 where I have talked about how you can use this library called dspec to ensure that your material design specification and the code that you implemented match perfectly with each other. Don't forget to check that video out. Next, let's focus our immediate effort to processing the Woli error properly. If you go to our fragment box office, we have this method on error response where we have sent the JSON request. You get a Woli error object here. How can we handle this? What are the different things that can arise out of this? How can we tell the users what to do under what error? So right now we have a simple toast here. That's definitely not a good way to do it. Just remove the toast. And let's go back to the documentation of Woli and take a look at class Woli error. You can see there are a lot of subclasses here. Parse error, server error, timeout error. And there's also a use case for each of these. Let's take a look at that. Let's go to this link here which says use. You open that, you find out all the use cases of Wally error. Here are the five or six subclasses of Wally error that we have. If you open one of them, they all extend from Wally error and they all represent some conditions. For example, no connection error simply says indicating that no connection could be established while performing a Wally request. Now we would like to divide our error into each of these and handle them appropriately. Auth failure error indicating there's an authentication failure. Most of them are pretty self-explanatory. Hence, I'm not going to explain what they do, but no connection error and timeout error roughly indicate the same thing to our user that the connection timed out and hence there could not be a connection that was established. So going back to our code inside the on error response where we get the volley error object, we can have a nice nested if else statement catching each error that can arise. So timeout error and no connection error roughly represent the same thing. In our case, we want to tell the user that something has gone wrong and that is pretty simple. We can go to our fragment box office which currently uses a frame layout and we can add a text view below our recycler view here. So here's my text view 
which is at the center of the screen which we can't see right now because the recycler view is not being rendered on my android studio i've given it a width of match panel and grab content now if you remember this is a frame layout only one item is going to be visible at a given time we can make this text view completely invisible by simply saying visibility equals to gone here and later when molly error arises we can make that text view visible and print the right message inside it so let's go to the top and inflate the text view inside our on create view method so once you have created an instance variable of the text view at the top and inflated it all the way inside the on create view at the bottom over here the next step comes inside our on error response method here we first set the text view to visible because we have made it invisible we can simply say set visibility and we can say view dot visible over here now since we have made it visible here on a future request when the re response is successful we don't want the text view interfering so we have to make sure that we again hide it if there's good response with the help of volley so we can go inside each of these case statements and simply have some kind of message by saying set text in our case i'm going to simply say r dot string dot error timeout of course we need to create this press alt enter it says create a string value resource error underscore timeout and here i'll simply say the connection could not be established so at this point i have added appropriate text messages for all types of errors that can arise in our app when it comes to handling a volley error from our own error response i simply call this method handle worry error where i'm taking care of all the logic also ensure that you make the text volley error as gone or hide it if there is a good response inside the own response method so let's test out whether this thing is going to actually work or not the way we can do that is simply go to url endpoint here and change the url a bit and find out whether our volley is still going to work so there you go with our app and if you go to the tab now it says oops data received was an unreadable mess now that's of course a custom message which i've added and it was triggered from our parse error because i changed the url so it means that things are working now we also want to ensure that the subsequent time we send a request first of all we should be able to send a request the subsequent time and for that we probably need to add a button here or add an item at the top saying refresh and click on that again and this error disappears and we have the new response or attempt to load the new response once again so that is one thing that we need to fix so i modified the url and we are back to the same place now let me show you something if you go here straight to settings now if you turn the wi-fi off and if you come back to our app here there is of course no sign of anything but if you press back here then the app activity is going to be destroyed if you go back to the main activity now here it says oops your connection timed out so here if you turn back the settings and the wi-fi to on here it's not telling us whether the connection is back or not the only way to find that out is to exit our activity and come back here which means we need active network monitoring if the network is on we should be able to load the data immediately and if the network network is off we should be still able to retain the loaded data now that is offline access that we are talking about we need to modify that one more bug that we currently have is if you take the lollipop device here if you rotate the screen bam everything is gone there is no sign of it it loaded this data once again we don't need double loading in our app rather we should be able to save the data that we have once loaded prior to rotation instead of loading the whole thing again so we need to fix this as well there's one more thing that i would like to point out with respect to our volley error object you can access the network response by simply saying error dot network response over here so this gives you an object of type network response let's take a look at the documentation of that class so you come to this class network response it says data and headers return from network dot perform request here get access to the raw data the headers the not modified and the status code if something goes wrong by which you can compare whether the status code was 404 or 500 or something like that now this object may be null hence you should check for it before you try to access anything from the network response object now i won't be using that here because i'm pretty happy with whatever error handling we have so far but i indicated just in case you want to know how to handle a 404 error or display a custom message for a 500 server error and so on now i would like to know certain things from you as well how would you handle volley errors and network errors what do you think about this text view approach do you think there's a better approach that you are aware of let me know in the comments below this app is far from over how to animate the recycler view how to add contextual actions, how to add the floating action button with a contextual menu inside it, 
how to ensure that our app stays dynamic in terms of network how to make sure that our app is smart enough to know when the network is on and off and load data automatically how to cast data for offline access how to save data across screen rotation all these things and many more things with respect to material design are coming up in the upcoming videos in the meantime if you like what you saw please like this video share this video subscribe to slide nerd and let us know your thoughts in the comment boxes below thanks for watching i'll catch you guys in the next video have a nice day